Here's how the magic really happened. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 behind the scenes secrets from Harry Potter. There's nothing in here about using defensive spells. Using spells? <laughs> well, I can't imagine why you would need to use spells in my classroom. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've gathered the juiciest, most surprising, and most significant onset stories to emerge from the Harry Potter franchise. Major news stories from the films haven't been included, as we're focusing on facts which largely bypass the Muggle mass media. Okay, yeah, uh, great, fine, no problem. Number 10, Harry was hungover. If you've got something to say, don't be shy, spit it out. The Boy Who Lived may have been one of the world's best-loved heroes, but Daniel Radcliffe was a bit of a rogue at times. Having grown up under intense public scrutiny, the actor has often admitted to being bleary-eyed on set, claiming that some crucial Potter scenes were filmed whilst he was nursing a hangover. You just have to tell me. He has also spoken out about drunkenly hooking up with Harry Potter groupies, and some 2009 reports claimed that Radcliffe and Rupert Grint had been smoking a questionable roll-up, though both strongly denied those accusations. Should anyone, student or staff, attempt to aid Mr. Potter, they will be punished. Number 9 Draco's wife was his girlfriend. You go on. I want to check something. While the epilogue continues to divide opinion with fans, it did afford an opportunity for a very small, though quite romantic cameo. Just before Harry's heart-to-heart -heart with his son, we catch a fleeting glimpse of Draco with his family, including his wife Astoria. She was played by Draco actor Tom Felton's then-girlfriend, Jade Olivia. The pair had met on set, where Jade worked as a stunt coordinator and extra, and they were together until 2016. I know what you did, Malfoy. You hexed her, didn't you? Number 8 Jason Isaacs was caught stealing. From one famous Slytherin to another, and Draco's father, Lucius Malfoy. What's the use in being a disgrace to the name of wizard if they don't even pay you well for it? An all-out buddy in the movies, he earned a slice of bad boy rep behind the scenes as well because he had a tendency to steal stuff. First he tried to nab his character's wand, and then he tried to pinch some copies of the Daily Prophet. He failed on both occasions. But casual pilfering was supposedly rife across the Potter set, with one famous anecdote centering on a pile of gold coins which were supposedly swiped as mementos while filming Philosopher's Stone. Number 7, Emma Watson almost quit. How could I be so stupid? In the mid-2000s, and particularly after filming finished for the third and fourth movies, contract speculation rumbled through the cast, particularly among the younger cast members. Daniel Radcliffe is said to have seriously considered ditching his role following Goblet of Fire, concerned that Harry would hamper the rest of his career, but Emma Watson reportedly came the closest to quitting. The actress was worried that the intense schedule would distract from her education. She needs to sort out her priorities. Thankfully, a balance was struck, Hermione went unchanged, and Emma eventually graduated from the prestigious Brown University. You really are the brightest witch of your age. <laughs> Number 6, Neville was wearing a fat suit. And who might you be, young man? Neville Longbottom. Since Harry Potter, and after years of playing the awkward and lumbering Neville Longbottom, Matthew Lewis has made many a headline as a surprisingly handsome chap. But in truth, the actor was never a dead ringer for Neville in real life, as he wore a fat suit for a lot of his scenes. In fact, the assumption that Lewis himself was chubby caused the child actor some distress while filming. I'll fight you! And Lewis's misfortune doesn't end there. While shooting Order of the Phoenix, Helena Bonham Carter ruptured his eardrum with an overenthusiastic thrust of her wand. Ouch. How's mum and dad? Better now they're about to be avenged. <laughs> Number 5, there was no need for love potions. Mimicking most of their on-screen characters, a lot of the Potter cast were rumoured to be romantically involved at some time or another, with some stories proving more reliable than others. I think I love her. 
Daniel, Rupert and Matt Lewis all supposedly had eyes for Emma Watson, but she was constantly linked with Tom Felton. I had a really terrible crush on Tom Felton. And while he was reportedly into Emma too, we've already seen that Felton paired off with Jade Olivia. He also admitted that Helena Bonham Carter was his biggest cast crush. Then there was the Bonnie Wright, Jamie Campbell Bauer engagement, but that was called off in 2012. It's all quite confusing. I'm sure Harry's kissing was more than satisfactory. Number four, Harry had lots of ones. Curious. Very curious. You've heard it said that the one chooses the wizard, but Harry's chose him at least 80 times. Daniel Radcliffe's often foolish one waving resulted in many a broken prop, so his weapon of choice was replaced countless times. Sticking with breakages, the crew went through 14 battered Ford Anglias before filming finished on the Chamber of Secrets, and over 40 lockets were used in the making of Ron's Deathly Hallows Horcrux scene. And to further stats to blow Buckle minds, Oliviander's was filled with over 17,000 hand decorated one boxes, and the Gringotts chandeliers held 25,000 crystals each. Number three, some famous lines were improvised. While these films are responsible for some of cinema's greatest ever quotes, some of the best one-liners weren't in the script at all. Like when Harry's running on Polyjuice Potion and Malfoy says this. I didn't know you could read. Or when Lucius improvises this line. Let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. Only for Harry to hit back with this. Don't worry, I will be. Barty Crouch Jr.'s tongue tick was also an on-set invention by David Tennant, and the oh-so-awkward hug between Voldemort and Draco was completely off the cuff too. No wonder Malfoy looks so taken aback. Number two, Harry Potter and the outbreak of head lice. Is this all real? Or is it just happening inside my head? Movies can suffer production delays for all manner of reasons, but few films are held up for this. Cast and crew were forced off set during shooting for the second Potter installment when the majority of youngsters, and some of the adults, caught a bad case of nits. Harry! What? <sighs> Proving that even Hogwarts students aren't immune to everyday school kid problems, the Chamber of Secrets was set back a couple of days while everyone de-liced. Let's take him to Hagrid. <laughs> Hell know what to do. Madame Pomfrey was working overtime. Number one, Alan Rickman knew Snape's story from the start. Or important parts of it, at least. Concentrate, Potter. Focus. Snape's final memories are an absolutely pivotal moment in the films and books, revealing where the character's loyalties really lay. But while the plot twist at the Pensieve caught Harry by surprise, it was no shock for Snape's actor, Alan Rickman. J.K. Rowling let Rickman in on specific details about his character's history, particularly his love for Lily, prior to filming Philosopher's Stone. After all this time, always. As such, Rickman purposefully shaped his performance with snippets from Snape's story in mind, despite his directors being none the wiser. What a hero. Can you share what that was? No. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.